Hello everyone, welcome back to Blockman Editor Tutorial. In these videos, we will give you a complete introduction to the Blockman Editor. In this video, we will learn about the global trigger. Go to the editor, click the game settings button, and in the triggers and scripts tab, open the edit screen for global events. Here, we can edit the global triggers. Global triggers are used to handle logics related to the whole game. We can see that from the individual trigger nodes in the global trigger. The trigger nodes of the global trigger are while waiting for the player to enter the game, while waiting for the game to start, when the game is ready to start, when the game officially starts, and when the game is over. The while waiting for players to enter the game node corresponds to the matchmaking phase of the game. The while waiting for the game to start node corresponds to the preparation phase of the game. The when the game is ready to start node corresponds to the countdown phase of the game before the official start. The when the game officially starts node corresponds to the official start of the game. The when the game is over node corresponds to the ending phase of the game. It should be noted that the above trigger nodes are triggered at the moment of the start of the corresponding phases. For example, let's set the duration for waiting for game start to 5 seconds. In the trigger edit interface, select when the game officially starts as the trigger node. Select create NPC in the entity's action node. Then we enter the operation mode. You will find that when the game is in the waiting phase, the NPC has not been generated yet, and the moment the game proceeds to the start phase, the NPC gets generated. Next, let's create a scenario where we can give all players a real-time countdown. Open the global trigger edit interface and select when the game is ready to start as the trigger node. Click on the variables button in the upper left corner of the interface to create a global variable time, store the specific value of the prompt time. Then double-click on the execution port, select set global variable, new action node list. Select time for the variable parameter. Set the value parameter to 60. We'll cover more about global variables in the future videos. Next, let's click the Add button below the trigger node to add a new action node. Double click the action node's execution port to open the action node list and select timer in the logic list to complete the prompt countdown operation. In the interval parameter, we fill in one second and in the times parameter, we fill in 60. This means that the current timer will execute the logic connected after the action node once every one second for a total of 60 times. Next, the logic we need to complete is to display the time of the countdown. Drop the list of action nodes from the execution port behind the action node and select the iterate over the array node in the logic node. Here we have to give the local variable parameter a name, for example, calling it player, which is used to represent each player taken from the array. Then connect obtain all players in the entity node after the array parameters. This means that we are iterating over all players, and then have each player execute the logic connected after the action node, in the iterate over the array node. The content related to iterate over the array and local variable, will be covered in detail in a future video. Next. Double-click the execution port of the iterate over the array, select the display tips node in the interface, select the obtain local variable node in the entity parameter of the node, and fill in the variable name player. The content we want to display is countdown 60, which is composed of two parts, countdown and the time value. The countdown part is constant, and the time value part needs to be changed, so how do we merge the two parts together? Double-click on the content execution port and select the combined string node. Edit the unchanged content in the string 1 parameter countdown. Select convert the values to the character string with the string 2 parameter and then link to obtain global variables time. This is because the return value type of the global variable does not match the type of the string, so we need to convert the value of the global variable the type of the string using to convert the value to the character string node. Finally, set the display time parameter to 1 second 
which means that the display content will only exist for one second, and with that, the time logic of the display countdown is completed. Next, we'll create the logic that allows the countdown to work. Click the Add button below the timer to add a new action node. Double click the execution port, select the set global variable action node in variables, and set the variable to time. Since we are using the global variable time, to record the value of time, we need to make the value stored in the global variable time decrease by 1 per second to achieve the countdown. Here in the value parameter, we choose the integer operation node. With value 1 we link to the global variable and select time. With value 2 we set it to 1, and the operator is set to subtract. This means that our operation subtracted 1 from the value stored in the global variable time, and then added the new the results back into the global variable time. With the steps above, we completed the real-time prompt countdown. And now we put it into operation mode. As you can see, when the game phase proceeds to the countdown stage, Content Timer will appear at the top of the page. That's all for this video. We hope it can help you on your way to a great creator. If you want to know more about the editor, you can comment below the video or post on the official forum. See you in the next video.